All right. This is example one from section 3.3. And what we're going to be going over is working forward through a proof in this first example. So notice where we started out is uh, this is what we're proving. We have two premises. We have A and B as our first premise. And we have if B, then C as our second premise. And our conclusion here that we need to derive is just C. And so remember what we said in the tutorial is that if our conclusion is atomic, then it's best to work forward. And so working forward is basically a guess and check strategy. We're looking to figure out what we can derive from our premises and then continuing to see what we can derive moving forward until we see a strategy to our conclusion. And so since C is an atomic sentence, working forward is our best strategy. Now remember, the second thing that we know about the working forward strategy is the most important first step you can take is you can reduce all of your conjunctions. So if you have a conjunction in your premises, you want to reduce it down to its conjuncts. We do that using conjunction and elimination, which allows us to take a conjunction and break it down into its parts, break it down into its two conjuncts. So notice here, this works out well for us because we do in fact have a conjunction. So let's go ahead and we're going to write out our working proof. And then we're going to work on reducing down into the parts. So our working proof is going to look like this. We're going to write out our premises. So first we have A and B. Second, we have if B, then C. And then we're going to give ourselves a few dots. So we're going to give ourselves a lot of space to get down to our conclusion C. So first and foremost, I'm going to erase our dots now. First and foremost, let me draw a line here. So first and foremost, we draw a line between our premises and our conclusion so that we know which of the numbered sentences are our premises and which ones are the things that we derive. Now, we know that through conjunction elimination, we can derive each of the conjuncts in one. These are the conjuncts right here that we're going to derive. So we can derive A, and that's through conjunction elimination of line one. So we're going to put line one there. And then our second thing we can derive is B through the same rule, conjunction elimination, line one. Now we ask ourselves the following question. We say, given A, we want to know where the atomic sentence A shows up in the premises. Does it show up in any premise other than the one we use to derive it? And so the, sent the line we used to derive A was one. So we want to know, does it show up in the premises? other than in the premise in line one. So does it show up in the premise in line two? The answer is no. So A is not going to be particularly useful to us in terms of deriving stuff because it doesn't show up anywhere other than the premise in line one. So we're not really going to use A, it looks like. So now we can ask the same question about B. Does B show up anywhere other than the premise in line one? So does it show up in the premise in line two? The answer is yes, it does show up in the premise in line two. So great, that means we can use it. So now we have to ask ourselves the following question. If you have these premises, if B then C, and you have the premise B, is there something that you can derive? And the answer should be very straightforwardly, yes. There very much is something that we can derive. And what we can derive is C, because we know that if we have a conditional, and if the antecedent of the conditional is true, then we can always derive the consequent. And this has the name um, conditional elimination, right? So it's a way to eliminate a conditional. Remember that we have also called this by its Latin name, which is modus ponens. But for sake of a proof, we call it conditional elimination and we represent it as with a conditional and an elimination sign. And remember, it takes two lines, it takes two premises right here to derive the conclusion. So it's going to take line two, that's our conditional, and it's going to take line four, that's our antecedent, right? So we've got two and four right here. And that allows us to derive C. And notice that C is exactly the conclusion we were looking for. So we've derived at our conclusion. How did we do that? Well, we looked in the premises for stuff that we could derive. And then we looked at what we derived to see if we could derive further stuff from those derivations. Plus, ooh, we looked to see what we could derive 
from those derivations plus the premises. So now we need to clean up our proof a little bit. Now the first thing that we do to clean up our proof is we look at what stuff we've derived that we don't really need. So like what have we derived that doesn't really end up being useful to us? Notice that the main thing we've derived that's not useful is A. We didn't use A in any of our subsequent derivations, right? Remember, it didn't really help us because it didn't show up in any other premise. So we can get rid of A, right? We don't really need the derivation A. We only need the derivation B. So now we have to fix our numbering system. So we fix our numbering system. This is no longer four and this is no longer five. Now we have this is three and this is four. But notice that means we have to change the numbers right over here because no longer is the antecedent, that is B, no longer is B letter number four, it's now letter number three. And so we change that to three. And now we have our full working proof. So now we can translate that into the Fitch system. Remember the Fitch system requires us to put our numbers on the left-hand side of the line and our sentences on the right. So we have our premise one and our premise two. Our first premise is A and B. Our second premise is if B, then C. Our first derivation, which is gonna be three, is B. We get there by conjunction elimination using line one, right? Because line one is our conjunction. And then we arrive at our conclusion, which is C, via, by a conditional, by a conditional elimination from lines two and three because line two is our conditional, line three is the antecedent of the conditional. And so now we're finished. This is our final proof.